All right, guys, let's get cozy. Warm, fuzzy bunny slippers. This is from the actual cover of the little book. So we'll talk more about that in just a second. Let's get started. Good morning and welcome to Deliberately Creative. I'm Stephanie and we're here with a warm and cozy, comforting type of painting. We're doing soft, but fuzzy, fuzzy, warm, bunny flip, bunny flippers? <laughs> bunny slippers, fuzzy, warm, bunny slippers. So this was, uh, I actually did this as a printout from the book. If you want to paint along with me, you can download this book from Teespring. It's the 30 Cozy and Creative Hand-Drawn Designs. The link is up in the chat, pinned at the top. It's also down below in the more information box. I do have this little guy on my top-down screen as the insert so that we um, reference so that you can see the colorway I chose. Now you could choose to do pink fuzzy bunny slippers. You could have purple bunny f bunny slippers. I'm going to keep saying bunny flippers now. <laughs> what can I say? Good morning. Hello, hello to everyone coming into the chat. Thank you so much for being here. Remember, click that subscribe button and the notification bell so you'll be notified when new videos go up. I am doing these paintings directly from the 30 drawings that I did during my huge, huge 14 hour drawing marathon. But enough of that. I just want to get right into painting today. I'm going to try and stay on track. So we are going to move things out of the way. I have this drawn on a piece of, let's see, do I have the my little dirty sample piece. Uh, this is drawn directly. This is the original paint uh, drawing that was drawn with the eco pen, cardboard tube insert that goes in. Lovely waterproof ink, so good for watercoloring on top of. I drew on top of the bamboo mixed media paper by Hannah Mula, and uh, it's lovely because you can actually lift so nicely off of this. The um, it is acid free. It is made in Germany and it is lovely. I like this. It's 90% bamboo and 10% cotton. So we are going to go in. Good morning, Miss Sue Moore. It's early morning for you, isn't it? I am going in here and we are going to put sort of a warm warm yellow. Actually, I need to clean. I did not see that. I need to clean this yellow off because I don't want it to be green. So I'm just getting it wet and wiping it off. Look at that. So now I'm taking some yellow and I want to get this yellow in here so that I have the yellow glow really strong. I want a strong yellow glow. I want the yellow glow up in the lampshade also. We will be layering more colors up on this. Now I'm going to just take that and draw that color down and out so it gets more diffused as we go back. We will be putting yellow glow on the bunnies and on the cup also, but that'll come later. Look at this. We're we've got this warm yellow glow for the lighting. We're going to let that sit for a second and grab a shadowy color. And I'm going to go with this sort of rusty brown color and a little bit of an orange to start working my wall in this shadowier color. Look at that. We're just working really quickly. We don't want to, we don't want to get too fussy. So I am just sort of working this brownish orange. This is our first layer. We'll glaze in, but
but I want that glow to feel like it's going through and out into the wall behind. Well, guess who's here? Devontic is here, and Lorianne, and Mary, and Sue, and BS, BS. Well, BS, welcome. Haven't seen you here before. Thank you so much for joining. We are going to go ahead, and while that's just sort of settling down up there for a second, I want the, paper, the paint to kind of sink in a little bit. I'm going to come down below here, and I'm going to go in with a slightly different yellow not quite as bright or it is bright but it's not going to be as bright this front is going to end up having a lovely green patina to it and yellow kind of antique -y. this is sort of in that uh vintage old old side table that you would have had um maybe in the late 60s early 70s some of the colors would be in a you know that kind of avocado green going on so we're just wandering through here look at this i just picked up this is kind of a sagey avocado-y green i just want to get some of these colors down so that we have an idea where we're going the bunnies are the last things that we're doing because they're the most in front. So I want to get this other stuff really quickly laid in. I'm putting a darker, darker tone of that color right up along the edge of the front. And you see where this is the drawer and that is the, the top, the countertop of the table, of the side table. So I want a bit of a shadow going in here under the edge where that drawer front is. Little things, little things. We're not, not gonna push too much in the way of harsh detail here. We keep things simple so that we can add color to it and give it a little bit more character. Let's go ahead and zoom in just a bit. We don't need to be quite so far away. I'll zoom in more when we get close to the bunnies. You got your book today and you're in love? Oh, excellent. Yeah, um, what Lorianne's talking about is the actual book that is available from Amazon. And it's on my Amazon links. So if you click my Amazon links down below, I have a tab for my store for my books. And my newest books are on the top at the beginning so it's fun to have if you don't have a printer and you can't print the the whole you don't or you don't want to print the whole book see because what I mean by print the whole book just use the downloadable and you can print it out as many times as you want okay I'm trying to not be a sales sales pitch this time or a con constant sales pitch so if you guys want to talk about it in the chat, that's awesome sauce. I'm just grabbing some of that color and making it a little bit darker. My paint is, is still wet. The paper is wet. And I am using my little reference there in the corner that was, that I used for the actual cover. See, it was used for the actual cover. It looks the same. And you'll know that when you print things out, things will be different colors than what you see on the screen. That's just the nature of the lighting for your screen and the way your screen carries color. So things can look a little bit different from a static uh, pre-printed screen to a you know, straight view on the screen. Daffy Kibble. Kibble. Daffy Kibble. I love that name. That is excellent. Greetings. And yes, greetings, beautiful people. Isn't that? That is so true. I like this little kind of uh, burst of color that happened up here on the, on the background. 
I like that. That's, that's pretty. It's softer. I am happy with this. I think we're going to dry so that I can put my brown tone on that handle. It's going to be kind of a bronzy brown tone. Then we will do the, well, actually I can do part of that. We're going to make the top here is going to be, let's see. I did the top with sort of a blue and purple and gray type of shadow, maybe slightly pinkish. I wanted it to be maybe along the lines of like a bit of a marble or something like that. And in my, in my actual painting, it looks like I painted out that, that line at the back. That's fine. We're going to have, we're going to have color on that, but it's going to be glowing also. So, you know, let's just get some color here. If I draw a little bit of that color up from the tabletop, that's okay. We are having just a really good time. This is number 16 of 30. So we still have 14 more images to go. That's going to be a lot of fun. We've got cozy images, things that are like calm, self-care, bunny slippers. I mean, what's more self-care than a pair of bunny slippers, right? I think I am going to take a bit of that Prussian blue. It's a lovely kind of gray blue. Let's water it down and drop some of that in here. I did not get the bunnies wet. So the, the paint isn't going to go flowing into the bunnies or into the mug. I kind of like that I've got the yellow down there on the tabletop. This color is going to, to lighten. It's not going to be as dark. And I want it to be a different tone than the actual bunnies or the, or the mug. So let's look at that. You got your notifications. You got yours. Ah, what is the watercolor? The watercolor I'm using is the 42 colors watercolor fan palette from uh, Amazon. And I have it listed in my Amazon links down below. Make sure that when you uh, click on the link and check the price, if the price is more than about 16 or $17 max, look around, uh, do a search on Amazon for uh, more of the 42 colors sets because many different people are selling the set. As long as it says superior right here at the top, it's the same set. So many of them will give you a closer up view of the pictures. So, uh, you know, closer up view picture of the palette there. That's the word I was trying to go for. Stephanie's vi videos are listed, um, at 11 AM on YouTube. Yes, that is my, that's my 11 AM Pacific time. So if you are, you know, watching at other times of the day, just note what time of day it is because that's the time of day I'm going. <laughs> I am looking at that going just there, drop it down. Why am I not getting the right times for these videos and notifications? I do not know, except that YouTube is uh, very particular. If you have your notifications set on the app, but then you, or set on the actual, um, like the, uh, in a, in your browser, but then on your phone, you have told it not to give you notifications or you've told it to only give you some, it won't give you all of the notifications. And many times it will show the, uh, UTC time, the universal time or the Greenwich mean time until I go live. So you kind of have to 
I mean, it does that to me too when I'm watching uh, different friends' videos, uh, live streams. Uh, if it's before the live stream, it'll say it's at um, 6 o'clock. But 6 o'clock UTC time is actually 10 a.m. my time. So I just have to know that YouTube shows it to you in universal time many times also. So I just put some stronger Prussian blue right here underneath of the bunnies. This is this is just the the top of the of the little side table. It's a nice deep side table. Big enough for your cup of cozy tea. Hello Karen, lovely to see you. 7 p.m. Yes, actually, that is UTC time. If you are in Pacific time, 7 p.m. would be 11 a.m. Pacific time. So that's why it says that. It is, that's the universal or Greenwich mean time is what they used to call it. Now it's universal time, UTC. It's the universal time clock, which is set to Greenwich mean time. All right. I like that. I like that a lot. I want to dry this and put, after I put just a little bit more shadow, this edge over here is going to be more in shadow. Looking at it because the lights on that side of it. So it's sort of coming across the little bunny slipper is going to be more in shadow on that side. And by tapping the color in, it's making it look like this is um, modeled or maybe it has like that fake marble or laminate type top on the top of it. It works. It works. A little bit of shadow there. Rosalie, 5 a.m. insomnia. Rosalie, are you in... Are you in Australia? Oh, you're in Australia. I just read up. <laughs> Welcome. So insomnia time. Ah, that, that can be, uh, well, it's fortunate for us. You, you found us fortunate for you. You found something kind of fun to watch, huh? I have a lot of friends here from Australia. Thank you. I appreciate you being here. And if you are somebody who you don't always get to see me live, you can watch these videos in replay mode. They will stay up on YouTube. They're not going to go away. Right. So, Lorianne, 7 p.m. is the UTC time. So, if it's 7 p.m. UTC time and you're on the East Coast, you subtract five hours from UTC because that would be like London time is 7 a.m. or 7 p.m. Um, my time, I subtract, um, I subtract eight hours from that and I, I'm at 11 a.m. So that's how that works. I like this where it's sort of the water sort of drained down in here. It's giving us this really fun edge. I'm looking here. Let's, let's get that brown in for the handles and our trim so we can just have this kind of finishing up. It is going to bleed a little bit. The paint is a little bit wet down in here still. It's not super wet, but it's a little damp. We've got that wooden handle going on. I'm going to grab some of the more burnt se or the sepia brown, burnt umbery brown, and put a bit of that as a shadow underneath. The front of this is actually going to end up being a little bit darker, just the way the light's shining down on it, but it's still going to be more brown than. I like that. I'm going to put a little bit of a brown trim 
just around that edge of the drawer. It also just pushes it back, gives it a little bit of a shadow under there. One of the neat things about having already painted this once is I have kind of an idea of the order I want to do things this time. And you know what? I like that softer, less, less dark. I might bring this in just a little bit darker in the background, make it feel a little more nighttime. Yeah, UTC time. Uh, I don't know. It depends on what device I'm looking at for me. So some of my devices actually show correctly and some don't for the timing. All right. So in my original, I did this mug as a deep, bright orange. And I think I want to do that again this time. But I do want to dry this and make sure that it doesn't, it doesn't end up... Um, bleeding out. So I'm going to dry this area down here. It's fun having this kind of like a coloring book, being able to color it in however you uh, feel comfortable doing. Good morning, Miss Amy, and welcome. Pat Shorten, lovely to have you here. First time live, welcome. Welcome, welcome. This is a kind of a calm and hang out in my studio as I'm painting this. I have painted this once before because I used it for the cover for the book that has all 30 designs in it. If you're interested in the book, the link is up in the chat and down below in the more information. It's all of the designs that I did in my 14 hour marathon. And you can watch the 14 hour marathon videos. They are all time stamped. So if there's something, if you wanted to see how to draw this bunny, these bunny slippers, I show you step by step how I draw the bunny slippers. Good morning, Miss Linda. Welcome. All right. So now I am going to go sort of collapse my paint palette just a little bit. And I am going to take, let's see. I'm going to actually take some of that yellow again and put my yellow cup in so that way I can have some of that glow going on here. I am going to work it into the orange tones, but by getting that nice bright yellow in, it helps us keep that glow going. It gives a luminance to the colors. It uh, allows the colors to have that uh, basically a view of light has been shining. We will be using a little bit of white gouache. I'm just going in and lifting a little bit of that yellow right out of the center also. See, you can get things the way you want them. This bamboo paper works so nicely for lifting. There we go. Just get that color on there. So if you end up with an area that doesn't get any paint uh, from the main color, you've got a color already on your page. It's already adorable. Yeah, you know, these are, this is a fun and you know, it's a cozy type of painting. It is definitely one to uh, put you in that self-care mode. You've got this cup of tea with the, you know, the old fashioned single spoon tea, tea, tea ball, but it's on a handle. So it makes it nice to be able to drop it into your hot cup. I'm looking at that going, my tea, my table is a little lopsided. <laughs> I didn't notice that before. The tables, table's a little lopsided. Does anyone ever reply mentally and forget to actually type a response? Uh, yes. Actually, I'll be talking to you guys and I will reply mentally inside and think that I've said it out loud. Um, <laughs> so, hey, Joanne, welcome. I am going to put a bit of an orangey tone 
sort of bouncing between these two oranges here. I'm going to test it on the side. Oh, lovely. It's got kind of a burnt orange feel to it. So I'm going to put that color in. I'm not going to go all the way to that very back edge. I'm going to let it just have a bit more of that glow from the lamp. This is the number 12 round by Creative Mark, and it is their Mimic Squirrel. So it's a synthetic squirrel brush, which means no squirrels were used in the making of this brush. So light is shining on that side. There's light shining down inside also, but I will soften this orange out. Put a little bit of the orange on the handle, but I'm going to let it go to that much more bright yellow area. Top of this cup is going to be yellow because of the bright light. Carrot orange for the bunnies. You got it. Well, it's carrot orange for the bunnies. It's also because orange is a lovely complementary color to blue. And since these bunny slippers are going to be the gray blue color, it, it makes a nice compliment. But yes, carrot orange for the bunny, bunny slippers. It's also a warm and comforting color. I like orange. When I was little, my mom made me a coat that was a beautiful burnt orange. Now, when I was little, I did not think it was a beautiful color. I thought it was kind of a dirt color. It's like, mom, why'd you choose that color for me? But now I look back at it and I go, oh my gosh, yeah, that, that was a really pretty color. So see what I've done here is I, by having that yellow underneath, I can now go through here and just lift out a bit of that orange. And we've got this really pretty, just soft glow. I'm saying there might be another light in this room. So there's other lights bouncing around in here. Maybe a little bit darker right there, right at the very base of it, between their little faces. All right. Lost Minds Anonymous. <laughs> I think I'm a charter member. Just ask my husband. He will probably tell you I'm a charter member. But you know what? I seem to find more of my mind when I do things like this. When I paint. And just enjoy some time doing things that make me happy, I seem to find more of my mind. Just a tiny touch of that orange on the top. I, I don't want to color it in too dark. I want it to have that orange and yellow glow. Let's zoom out and take a quick look. So that's how we're going. I think I do want to darken up the above part here just a bit. So we're going to get that. You want mine in turquoise with pink and purple. Ah, hey, you know what? You are will are welcome to go in and put your colors in however you wish. That's the cool thing about painting. Now I'm getting the background here a little bit wet so that when I put my colors in, my little bit darker browns. I'm going to take that orange that I was working on with the cup, maybe that orange that was up there, add a little bit more brown to it. This is sort of a uh, burnt sienna brown. I want to get a little bit more of a shadowy tone going on 
up here in the background. I'm going to use my, my wet brush in just a second. But I want to get it darker. I don't want to put any blue in this this time, so I don't want it to go black, but I do want it to be a little bit more brown. So I'm taking a bit of that burnt umbery brown into it. And there we go. There. So now what I'm going to do is kind of work this back. Just a bit. And then, see, I got some down here on the table that I didn't like. I just dab it off. You can do the, ooh, I like that. Let's, let's give that wall a little bit of some texture. Maybe that wall was um, plastered instead of being like wallpapered or somebody had fun doing the, the texturing. Oh, nice. Nice, nice, nice. Find little dry spots on your paper towel to sort of flip around and get to. There we go. All right, so now I'm just gonna let that background up there dry. It's going to do whatever it's going to do. The lampshade. Now, before I did the lampshade in kind of a orangey tone, kind of going with the cup, but I'm thinking maybe we could do a slightly different color. Maybe See, this is where I'm going off script and I'm trying something a little bit different. Maybe I'll take a bit of this purpley tone. Yeah, I think I'm going to do it. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is I'm putting a little bit of that purpley tone up on that yellow. It, it's kind of gray right now. I want it to feel like there's some glow coming through that lampshade from the light on the inside, but I also want the lampshade to feel like it's a little bit more dimensional. So by putting a little bit of that purple, very light lavender-y color, or actually it's kind of a gray lavender, and when it mixes with that yellow, it goes even more gray which is really interesting. I will grab a smidge of some different purple. But I'm I'm actually enjoying that. It's coming through nicely. And I'm going to blot just a couple spots lighten it up just a little bit so it feels like the yellow is inside glowing inside that I need to take a little bit of that yellow farther over so what I did is I picked it up on my brush just move it over part of doing this is giving it that feeling of let's see is that the purple nope that's a blue or green sometimes I have to Just flip this. Oh, there it is. There it is. I do have a mischievous bit to me. I do like to, to go off script every once in a while. Look at that. We're just, but you can certainly take this into the, that, um, orange and yellows and golds and browns and keep it very earthy. I wanted to pop that up just a smidge. Yes, every all of the materials that I'm using are 
non-toxic ASTMD certified. That's the American um, Art Materials Standards. So even when your paints come from China and things like that, as long as they are ASTMD certified, you are, they've gone, they had to report to the um, U.S. government, basically. Just wiping a bit of that right there and kind of blotting off that edge just to keep the purple from bleeding out. There. I want to dry that so we can see if we're getting a proper glow. Yeah, you got to be careful with the Kool-Aid and uh, watercolor painting because you know what? It's real easy to drop your brush into the Kool-Aid cup thinking it was the watercolor. Do I have an older video doing a watercolor chart? I don't. And would you guys like me to do a watercolor chart? Um, I would say that a watercolor chart would definitely have to be a, a dropped video and it would be a speed video because nobody's going to want to sit and watch me for three hours do a watercolor chart if I were to sit there and do all of my colors. Isn't that pretty? So let's zoom out so you can see that in the... Bro oh, yeah. I like that color. That color, because I'm going to put a little bit of that color down here on the table, too. So look at that. Because I needed to deepen up the shadows under the bunnies a little bit. So I'm just using some of that purple down here. And it's subtle. And it is one of those things that your your mind will see that the color is more places on the table there we go see just just dropping that color back here a little bit into that yellow tone makes it feel like maybe the lampshade is casting a little bit of a glow also getting a little reflection of that purple. What do you think, guys? You liking that? I'm liking it. Can't stop laughing. Can't type because I'm laughing. You're, <laughs> you're glad that I only read about a third of the chat. Okay. Yeah, because I missed that part. I saw your can't stop laughing. All right. I want to put the coffee tea, well, actually it's tea, the tea in the cup. And I'm going to say that this tea is starting out with the yellow ochre color. I'm going to put it right across the little metal handle. And I'm going to just blot a little bit. Then I'm going to grab a bit of the sienna type color let that sit for just a second what I'm doing here is I'm layering up the colors in quick layers I'm going to go ahead and write there just sort of blot that off quick layers because we're going to have you know light is reflecting on this right It's fabulous. One of your favorites. Ah, oh, I love how each painting becomes somebody's favorite. They all become my favorites. They're all my, you know, kind of like your children. You like your children. You love your children. They're all individuals. They're all different. And they all have something special about them and each one of my paintings is like a kid uh, they all have something special about them I'm just sort of 
dropping a little bit of, I used burnt sienna brown, l yellow ochre, and the um, sepia brown. And I'm just kind of dropping them in and giving it a quick tap to blot it off. Very light, very light, just boop. And then putting color back in again. What's happening is the paper is absorbing the color in different, different tones. And I actually want to put a little bit of the orange color down here in the cup because it's, it's going to be reflecting some of that orange cup also. See, there's, I just spent a lot of time doing that little bit, didn't I? A little bit of a dab. There we go. Actually, I think I'm going to take some of that. Put just a little bit of this color, that sort of orangey tone, right up in the edge of the cup. And then dab off. It's just giving us some variation. I do need that, the brown down in the teacup part to be a little bit darker. Right around the edge. I need it to, to feel a little bit more solid. Not solid, but a little bit more like there's a surface. There we go. Just intensifying it a little bit leaving a little bit of shadow, leaving a little bit of light, grabbing a little bit of the yellow ochre, and a little bit of that really bright yellow to be the glow from the light lamp. Oh, look at that. We're getting, we're getting a lovely cup of tea Lovely cup. A little bit of that darker color right down there at the base. All right. <laughs> uh, thank you guys so much for being here. Let's zoom out again. Um, because this one is a complete picture, top to bottom, edge to edge, I want to keep zooming out so that you can see this a little better. And so I can see it a little better. I'm looking at that going, I need a little bit darker brown right out on the edge. And I think maybe I will mix the brown with some purple. Maybe we'll do that. Mix that and a little bit of purple. To kind of darken up the shadow right around the edge. Oh. See, and that's something, once you start learning what your colors can do, you start seeing, oh, if I use a little bit of purple with that, I can get a better shadow. Purple is better for adding in for shadows with your warm tones than adding black to it would be. So I'm going to zoom back in. So if you guys notice, my nose is a little snuffly. I think I'm having a bit of an allergy attack thing going on. So please pardon the snuffly nose. I'm looking at this going, the base of the lamp needs to be just darkened up. So I'm grabbing some of the sepia brown. That's just the one down here at the bottom. It's, yeah, just the sepia brown. And I'm going to put some touches of that. Maybe this is a bronze wood or bronze metal for the base. Might put just a smidge of that in. It's a little bit more solid now. Ooh, I like that. Just a little bit of some shadow in the cup. See, I keep coming back. You'll 
you'll see that I do that, that I'll do something and then I'll come back later and work on it a little more. So there we go. There we go. We are having just a lovely kind of calm time. Taking care of ourselves. Doing things that make us happy. Look at that. I just softened that out with a clean brush, just a little bit of water. And now you've got that lovely soft glow from the yellow that was on the on the base of the lamp. I think I'm ready to start working on those bunnies and what I need to do is dry. I don't want anything wet near the bunnies when I start putting them in. So thank you guys so much. If you're new here and you haven't uh, done it before, click that subscribe button if you like what you see. If you like this video and you've already clicked that subscribe button or you're not sure about subscribing yet click the like button to show me that you like this video and this particular piece of art there we go bunny 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 oh so sweet so now I think I'm going to go ahead and go like this with my slightly damp paper towel. I'm just wiping off that residue of watercolor. Now this paper towel has had enough. It's done. I'm going to get a fresh one. <laughs> Hello, Debbie. Welcome. Yeah, so if people have problems with other YouTubers, not all YouTubers know each other. It's it's a really big world. And so if you have a problem with a YouTuber specifically, you need to find a way to contact them directly. Uh, going through intermediaries just causes more drama. It's better to always take care of things directly I would always want someone to come to me directly if they're having a problem so that I can work things out. And I'm sure that other people would like that also. I have some of this kind of purple color. This, I'd say that this is a really dark violet purple. And I'm taking some Prussian blue, adding that make it even more of a dark violet. And then I'm taking a bit of that burnt uh, or sepia brown. And that's going to be my dark gray. First thing I want to do is get the inside of those slippers the dark gray color. And I will lighten it up a little bit because there's going to be a little bit of light shining inside those slippers, but I want to get the paper kind of stained with the color. And there's a bit of that dark gray right here around the bunny's ear. Let's see if we go to that other view, if I've got right here around the bunny's ear, there's more of the inside of that slipper. You can make the decision on what is inside and what is outside. Okay. And then I'm looking down deep in the ear. I'm going to put a bit more of that shadow. And here I am going to put some pink inside the bunny's ears. But to start off with. I'm going to get some of this darker color going and the darker color on the inside of the slipper. That makes it look like you've got some place that your foot could actually go. 
Now I am getting it wet and I'm going to blot. See how I'm taking out a little bit of that color just by blotting it. It comes off in a little bit more natural way. Let's go back to the top down. This one's a little bit over bright today. Sometimes there. Yeah, see, you can see it a little bit better there. Just blotting it out a little bit. Now I am going to grab just a touch of that sort of yellow and mix it with that purpley blue gray color. And by doing that, it will give me sort of the idea that there's a little bit of light shining on the inside. without putting a super bright color. Oh my goodness, that's great. Blot that off on that side. I'm just using my brush that had that yellowy tone to blot off just a little bit. And now I'll put a little bit of that yellowy tone right in there. That is looking good. So now we need to focus. Welcome, welcome everyone. Oh, I'm so used to talking with the stuffy nose that uh, it's it's not a problem. There's nothing, to, it's, it's that um, my nose, the sinuses and stuff are kind of packed up. And so there's really nothing there to blow <laughs> out of my nose. It's just, it's that tight, stuffy feeling. Kind of like my nose feels pinched. All right, I'm going to grab... A little bit of the magenta type color and lighten it up with a lot of water and go in and put some of that pink on the inside of his little ears my bunnies do not have pink eyes my bunnies have um, like a, a dark blue or brown I'm, I'm not a pink eye bunny person. And since these are, you know, fluffy bunny slippers, they can be fantastical. You can make them whatever color way you want. Wow, that almost, that almost looks real inside those ears. Remember, they are fluffy. And I will be taking some white gouache to really fluff this guy up afterwards. All right. It might be the bunny slippers that are causing the, the snuffy nose. I might be allergic to bunny slippers. Oh, say that isn't so. That isn't so. All right. So now what I need to do. See, here, let's zoom out so you can see. So this is the painting that I did for the cover of the book. And you can tell that the color is uh, more intense in the uh, reference. That's just because of the way lighting works. But this is where we are right now. I changed up the color on the lamp, made it a little bit more purple. Well, made it purple. I like the softening of the glow through the lampshade here even better than this one. We've got the inside of the slippers. We've got the ears insides. We're ready to start putting color on the body of our bunnies. And I do like that. Whoa, I almost dropped my brush. Ah! So there we go. Um, and I just moved to, a di to the other screen. <laughs> that happens. Okay, so you can see that the colorway is closer to the um, reference picture from this camera. Different cameras give you different views, different colors. There we go. This one's a little bit more actual, actually the way the color looks. I like how the glow on the cup is here better the second time around. See, doing things multiple times, you end up with uh, 
variations that are a lot more fun. I do think I want to soften up up here just a little bit. I'm just sort of softening up that wall just a little. I like it a little bit softer and maybe a little bit more glowy going out. Ah, see, that's what it is. It needed more glow going out. See? Do variations on a theme. Test out. Try new things. Okay, so now I need to put a little bit more of the sepia or sienna burnt sienna back in there. Just a smidge. Thank you, Giovanni. Janavi. 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 Welcome. Thank you. So now I'm just going to soften that up, clean my brush, start from the inside here, work my way out, and try not to come back in with the brown into the yellow. So I'm just cleaning my brush and working out to give that soft glow. See a little bit of a line there. I want it to softly glow. There we go. And work my way back. Boom. That works. Soften that up right there. Make it a little bit more brown. See, that's what I do when I'm doing my artwork for myself. I'm sorry that I kind of jump around a little bit sometimes for you guys. But it's good for you to see how a person works on a piece of art in the full, the full view. So now what I'm going to do... Boom, bitty, boom, bitty, boom. We're going to zoom right in on those bunnies. And did I even... I did not record this from my top-down camera. Oh, no. Oh, I already did. I already did on my first one. I don't need to worry about it here. Phew. Okay, see, I was starting to have a, a little bit of a panic, and then it was like, oh, hold it. I don't need to worry about that. All right, so we've got this sort of purpley blue color up here. I'm going to make it more Prussian blue. This is going to be my main color for my bunnies. So I will get a lot of water on my brush and pick up some of that paint and... I'm looking at it going, all right, his muzzle down here is going to be, below the eyes is going to be white, and his little top fluff is going to be white, and his bunny tail is going to be white. So everything else, I can go in and just start laying some of this color down. If I put it down and leave a little bit of white here and there, it's going to it's going to give me place to put some of that yellow. I didn't want to turn it green, so I want to do my, my blue colors and then do the and then do the glow from the light on the bunny. And I'm putting it in kind of the direction that the hair would be. Say that when you're sewing these bunnies, there would be like a little seam going down the center to make shape. So there might be a little bit of that fluff. And when they put the eyes in, it sucks it down in so it might get a little bit darker but then right at the top edge of it, it will have a highlight. So I'm just putting those, those colors in like that. And then up here on his ear, sort of the direction that they would have the, that fr fuzzy fur working around those bunny ears. It looks a little bit patchy. 
don't worry because we'll be able to soften things out and he's going to look so cute and fluffy and I'm going to go over and do the same thing to the other bunny before I move on I'm just I'm sort of working both bunnies I will work both bunnies at the same time so that we can get done a little bit more quickly if I hang out and just work on one bunny all the way to completion that's what I would do if I were going to do a speed video I would just get one bunny done completed and then I would speed video all of the rest of it but we're not doing that so we're doing it all in real time so I'm going to work on both bunnies at the same time putting that color in leaving a little bit of an edge oh yeah when you haven't done something for a while going back in and trying again to do it it can be a new learning curve but but you will pick it back up more quickly than it when you're a brand new beginner so even if you're struggling a little bit with something that you've done before it will come to you more quickly than if you were brand new going in underneath I'm working his little face in as if there might be a little seam there you don't really see it now I did look at a pair of actual bunny slippers they were in an advertisement so just to get the idea of how you know they people work the color for the bunnies I don't own a pair of bunny slippers at this point I have owned them before I'm just putting some darker ver darker tone of that same same blue purple just dropping this color in so don't give up when you come back to something that you've done in the past and you want to, to practice and learn don't give up just sit down and and do it just like you are just like you're doing right now you're you're sitting down and doing something maybe something that you did years ago and you're just giving yourself permission to be a beginner for a little while I find things like I'll go through periods of time where I do something like I practice my ukulele now I don't play the ukulele very well I can do a few chords but I really you know and I can do a couple little strums but I don't really play music or songs that other people have written very well uh, and I want to get better doing it so every once in a while I will go and pick up my ukulele and I will you know noodle around on the ukulele and I'll find that my fingers start moving the way they're su supposed to after I've been noodling around for a little while so it's like oh I haven't forgotten everything haven't forgotten everything thank you Sandy hey Bertie M welcome any ideas to familiarize yourself with watercolor ooh let's see fun little exercises with watercolor you can take um, like three by five or just take a piece of paper and cut it into even cards so cut it into thirds uh, uh, across and thirds down so whatever size the cards are you've got nine cards off of one sheet of paper then take one color and put it in at the top take another color put it at the bottom and then work those two colors together and try and get a third color in the middle 
that's a way to work on having your paint flowing and getting a smooth wash and how to intermingle colors so that you have a third color. So you're learning about color mixing when you do that. You're learning about, I'm going to pick up a little bit of yellow. Make it a little bit grayed out. Touch a bit of the inside of that. And put a little bit of that glow right up there. And right on his ears. A little bit of the glow. So then you learn how those colors mix, how they intermingle, and it gives you some really pretty backgrounds that you can then use after they're dry. Then you can use them to do something else. So basically, playing, making color swatches, but make them gradient color swatches so then you can do something. So WC is watercolor. Yeah, that's you with the ukulele, Sue? Yeah, that's... Uh, I did... I know that that happens with me a lot because I do that... For many years, I tried to teach myself how to play the guitar. And the same thing would happen. I would practice a lot. I would learn a couple chords. And then I would put it away. And then I would practice a lot, learn a couple chords, and put it away. And then I would find when I would pick it up, I would sometimes have those chords. Uh, I have a slightly pinky version of that purpley color that I'm using very lightly down here to give us a little bit of shadow in the muzzle because white is, is great, but white doesn't act, white isn't actually very interesting. It's the shadows that are more interesting. So I'm using this sort of pink, pinky purpley color. Give him a little bit of shadow down here in this white muzzly bit and his fluffy, fluffy cheeks. So I'm just fluffing that in just lightly, lightly fluffle that in. Down here around his little nose. I'm going to make his little nose pink. The side that's farther away from the light might have a little bit more shadow. I'm going to say that right up there on the top of his cheek, right here, is going to be a little bit of that brighter color. So I'm just picking up a touch of that yellow. Maybe up here in his little top knot, his little Get a little bit of that glow going. See, just, just lightly, we're down to those details. We need to do a little bit of pink for his nose, both of them. So I, I have a little bit of water in my brush. I just picked up a touch of that pink. There we go. There we go. Oh, you're trying to add the matte medium to make it like gouache. Yeah, um, it's definitely a matter of, um, that's a matter of practice. And I've not done it. I was just saying that that might be a way that would work. <laughs> so I'm, I'm depending on you, Debbie, to give me a full report back on how that works and what you think. If you think it's something that I should probably try, let me know. I want to take a little bit of that gray on the back side of his little bunny tail. There's a shadow that's on the side that's away from the light. His little tail is still white. We're just giving it a little bit of texture, a little bit of shadow, maybe a little bit more in that blue gray. little white fluffy 
fluffy bunny backside. <laughs> yeah, all right. And now I'm going to soften up. See, I, I left that to sit for a while. Now I'm just softening up those edges. I cleaned my brush because I don't want them to be quite so harsh. But I didn't want it to fill in completely. So now there's variation and it's softer and fluffier looking, isn't it? So just take your little brush in just right up on the very tip. Let's see if we can get that very tip look. Right up on the very tip, I'm just gently, gently softening up those, those spaces. See right here on his ear? I don't need it to be quite so bright, do I? I'm just moving the paint around a little bit, softening him up fluffing him up, making it feel like this is, you know, a fake fur bunny slipper. So just, that's one of the cool things with this particular paper I love. And I really like this illustrative style. Let me know when they're dry and you'll wear them. <laughs> yeah, these are really fun bunny slippers, aren't they? Just grabbing a little bit more of that. Ooh, that's good. That's too much. Let's just work a little bit of the water down. I just want a little bit more of a shadow right here around the back edge. Down that side right there. A little bit more shadow here. This one's much more in the shadow right there, it feels like. More shadow right in there. A little bit of shadow right underneath of that bunny fluff. And kind of in around the bunny fluff in the back. See, you could go in and you can do so much detail. You could make these look completely real. I don't want to. I want this to have that soft, illustrative. Somebody's be somebody is being taken care of by someone who loves them. They've been brought some nice, soft, warm bunny slippers to wear. They've got a cup of tea. I will be getting a cup of tea as soon as I'm done. I'm not sure I've got a lemon, but I do have honey and I might have some lemon tea. So a little warm up of that. Okay. Soften those up just a bit. go in and give him some color in his eyes. And I think that I want to go with a nice kind of sienna brown. These are plastic little eyes, so they're not they're not the you know, they don't have to be realistic. These are just little plastic, plastic eyes that you would get in toys. But you know what? Sometimes you just, whoops, that's a little too strong. I need to dab that out just a smidge. I want a little bit of yellow. Kind of brighten up that brown just a smidge. Just because that's what I want to do. And now we'll go back to the top down and maybe we'll zoom right in on those eyes so you can really see what I was doing. There we go. And now I'm going to grab a little touch of that brown again. Just add a little bit of brown to the yellow. 
and it just tiny little things like that you you go oh my gosh she's being so fiddly with something so small but you know what sometimes those little teeny tiny detail is all it takes is all it takes see like pulling out just a smidge of that color makes those little eyes feel like the little plastic glowing or you know like the light is glowing off those plastic eyes so you can dab it with your paintbrush and dry your brush off or you can you know if it's really wet you can just dab with a paper towel yes you can move the paint around and soften the edges on the Arteza paper. This was done on the Arteza paper. And let's see. This is a painting that has been dry for a little, you know, for a little while. So I am going in and just painting right on top of the painting. And I'm just softening. It doesn't soften as much after all this time. But look, it's softening up. It's not as strong. And this is not the cotton paper. Now, on the cotton paper, it softens really easily. This is the um, Expert double-sided paper, 140 pound. It works really well in my printer. And that's the reason why I painted on that. So now, just go boom, dry that up. And you can see how sharp edged it is here. And how much softer it is right there. And this one's been sitting, like I said, for a couple weeks. So it's not... Um, it's not, uh, you know, perfect fresh paint. Let's see. A little bit of a shadowy bit right there above his nose. I'm going to put a little bit of white gouache out. So I can bump up a little highlight. I did just put that down on top of that pink. If it ends up getting a little bit of pink, oh well. So in his little top area here, I want a bit more of a highlight. So I'm just putting a little bit of highlight. I'm putting a little bit more back here on his tail. Just a smidge. Just a smidge. It's not... Um, there is a little bit of water in my brush that's coming down, so it's not keeping it as thick. <laughs> I am going to put some very fine little little hairs right along the edge of his little ears. Just touch, 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 touch. Light light fluffy bunny not not too worried about making this you know these are not real these are well you know they're they're bunny slippers they're real slippers but they're not real bunnies a little bit more light right up here maybe a touch inside the edge where the light would be hitting Come over to this one just putting a little bit of some texture that's the neat thing for the gouache it is opaque watercolor so it's basically the same pigments it's just not milled as finely as your transparent watercolor put a little bit of shine in my cup maybe a little bit of a highlight up here on the top edge little bit of a shine right there a little bit of a shine here some of my some of my little fluffs it's easier to put the point of the brush in the narrow areas and pull it back give me some fluffers 
right there. Maybe a little bit of fluff down here. Not too worried. Not too worried about it. Just having fun. I really am having fun doing this. Maybe a little bit of white on the tip of his nose. Getting some of that down there in his his fringe. Maybe a little bit on his cheek right there. A little bit lighter right there. You know, you pulling out a few little hairs going up from his nose towards his face, towards his eyes. You can have fun doing this however you wish. Uh, these don't have any whiskers. These bunny slippers didn't have whiskers, so in the, the original photo that I looked at. So, no whiskers. But I'm going to lighten up his eyebrow space, that little bit right over his eyes. Oh my goodness gracious. There we go. You know, we have warm, cozy bunny slippers. I'm going to put a little bit of light down. I'm going to put a little bit of light right down here on the handle. Maybe a little bit of light out here on the front edge. There we go. All right, so let's zoom out. And see how we think. See what we think. I think. I think we've hit it. I think we hit this one out of the park. I am going to go ahead and sign. Just like that. I am going to, before we pull the tape off, I'm going to let it rest for just a second. If I'm going to do my little commercial, guys, so hang with me, okay? If you haven't been here before, this is the Bunny Slippers Day 16 from my 30 cozy drawings, cozy creative drawings that I did in a 14 hour, hour marathon. November or December 31st, New Year's Eve. It was a long day and all of the designs are together in one easy download that you can get from Teespring. So the link is listed up above in the up above in the chat, down below in the more information. And there you go. This is what it looks like in the book. This is what it looks like on the original drawing really very cool very cool and right over there that's what it looks like that I did for the cover see I think we did pretty well getting that those guys painted in tomorrow's painting just so that you know tomorrow's painting is going to be this lovely young lady looking up I think it's going to be snowing in the background and a very simple snow background, the one that we love. Then her knitwear, she's going to have probably a lovely red sweater and cap, some soft blonde or brownish reddish hair. Not sure what color her hair is going to be yet. And there is a reference photo that we'll have up on the screen. I have not done her before yet, so we're going to do that. And then coming up after that will be the apple tart on the vintage plate. So we've got some fun things coming up. They are scheduled on my channel. If you click on the channel, look at the upcoming videos, you can click on the remind me. It will send you a reminder 30 minutes before the video, before the live stream. So we've got that. Then just this last weekend, just this last weekend, I did the 
mini marathon of drawing all six of these little designs for your happy Valentine's, happy Mother's Day, happy Friends Day, happy birthday, all of those. We drew them all up and then, and there were six designs. And then we painted them all in a second marathon video. So those I will have linked up here after the video is, this video is over. And I am going to be putting together for the color ones, a digital download. So you can download and print onto watercolor paper, your own painted Valentine's. And we already have the digital download of the blank ones so that you can print them out and color them. You or print them out, make a little coloring book and send it to your friends. This fits in a standard envelope with a single stamp if you just print it on text weight or mixed media weight paper. So, and this was printed on my printer here. So this is just printed on my printer. These guys, these ones right here were printed on my printer on watercolor paper. 140 pound watercolor paper at draft mode works. Okay, that's that's enough of that. But Teespring. So if you click on the link for the Teespring for this for this book, you can also get to the uh, Valentine book. So I hope that you guys enjoyed that. All right, last last thing. We need to pull the tape off of this. And since we've already gotten the background wet, the tape is already released. If you are background wet, background dried with the heat tool. If I hadn't, I would dry it with the heat tool and then uh, heat up the tape so the tape would release. I see some area here where it burbled over the edge. I'll show you really quick how you fix that. All you do is grab some clean gouache and a slightly damp brush and just paint right over it. And it might take one or two layers of paint. You can also do this with white acrylic paint. So the white acrylic, you will end up with a, oh, let's see. That's, that's blurring the line there. Maybe I can actually soften that up just a little because this is gouache it will soften up so now I will dry that I ha what type of printer do I have I have the Canon Pixima and it is the TS 9521 they have the 9520 the 9521 was just the crafter version of it 9521C it is a printer that will print uh, larger format paper. So I can print up to, I think it's 13 inches wide. So I could do, you know, prints and, and send them off. If I print it on the archival paper that they have, it, there we go. That's better cleaned up that edge. If I print on archival paper, they say it will last with these inks a hundred years. So, but I don't tend to do the prints. Looky, looky, looky. I like to have, I like to outsource that stuff to like Teespring or Redbubble, those types of places for my printing. Um, I'm not as particular right now. I might get more particular as time goes by, but look at this bunny slippers, lighted chartreuse nightstand as, um, as Michelle said. So there we go. Thank you guys so much for being here. Check out tomorrow's video, 11 AM Pacific time. I am doing Monday through Friday and, uh, we're just going to keep doing these into February so that I can have my weekends off.
Thank you guys, and I will see you soon. Remember, go out and do something creative. Take care of yourself so you can take care of those around you. And I want to see you back here again tomorrow. Don't forget, up in the iCard, after the video, I will, as soon as the video is processed, I will have links for the Teespring, for the 30 video, uh, the 30 video marathon, and the playlist for all of these paintings being done. Have a fun binge day, and I'll see you tomorrow.